Hi everybody and welcome to um, the very last chapter in the Unified Interface Playbook. Um, we have delivered um, three other chapters so far uh, which introduce the concept of the Unified Interface um, and move us uh, along into how you can get started, how you can optimise and do your transition. Um, and this last um, chapter is all about you know, uh, optimising for your opportunity, taking it to the next step. Um, and Mohammed is going to be presenting today. Um, so I'll hand over to Mohammed to walk us through the presentation. Um, of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free to post the questions in the Q&A window. I'll try and answer them as, as best I can. Um, and if we have some time at the end, we'll also open up for Q&A. Thank you very much and over to you, Mohammed. Thank you, Haley. Hello, everyone. My name is Mohammed Mahmoud. I'm a senior solutions architect with Dynamics 365 Fast Track team. And today we're going to talk about the last chapter, chapter four, optimize of the unified interface playbook. If you didn't get a chance to attend the previous chapters, uh, please uh, head over to our community site where you'll find uh, all of the previous chapters, all of the content that we have that will help you uh, transition into unified interface. As mentioned, today we're going to talk about the last and final chapter of the Unified uh, Interface Playbook. During this session, we're going to focus on how to measure and improve user adoption. Some of the design principles you should adapt as you're going through the, your project, how to plan your next releases. We're also going to discuss some of the quick wins that you can you can ena enable and configure in the system to uh, increase your user productivity. We'll also talk about uh, the product uh, release cycle and some of the new innovation we're releasing um, along with the unified interface. OK, first thing is user adoption. So when you start thinking about uh, transitioning uh, from your web client to uh, unified interface. One of the key aspects of uh, success if, uh, is thinking about user adoption, how you're going to monitor user adoption and how you can improve it. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is to establish your success team. Uh, your su we have identified four core uh, groups of uh, users within your organization can, that can help you uh, with your user adoption plans. What the first and foremost one is the executive sponsors. You want to make sure that you have uh, your executive sponsors on board. Uh, they are the users who are going to provide you with the business needs and objective. They also play a key active role uh, in communicating the vision to the rest of the organization as well as their uh, <laughs> as well as their executive peers. Second group is the, your uh, success owners. And these basically you can think of them as your product, uh, product owners or enablers within your organization. They will help identify the right stakeholders within uh, your different department. They will also help translate the business objectives and goals into Dynamic 365 use cases and scenarios. They also own the overall communication and training ex execution. The third group that you have are your champions. Uh, your champions are basically your subject matter experts within each uh, organization receiving the change. They are the, basically the go to person uh, within your organization. They will help evangelize and promote the new way of change. And they will also, uh, they're also going to be engaged heavily with the project team right from the start till the very end. The last core uh, user group that you want to look at are the early adapters. It's key uh, to make sure that you're selecting the right participant for the early adapter uh, program to make sure that you have a successful uh, launch. These are typically, these could be a subset of your champions or leaders from different, uh, from different departments. They are also uh, some of the users who would uh, typically struggle with adapting to new technology. So you want to be uh, able to capture their feedback early on. They can also be users within the different organization that are known for uh, providing uh, positive, uh, a constructive feedback. 
Here is an example of a set of uh, best practices uh, supporting roles uh, as you look at uh, user adoption. Uh, you'll notice here that we have the, the four key uh, user groups, but we also included uh, training lead, communication leads, and department leads uh, as they play a key role into user adoption. I also wanted to highlight one of the uh, one of the most important roles here is uh, innovation lead. Innovation lead is someone uh, within your uh, within your department that will always have an eye on new technologies and updates that is being ruled out, uh, rolled out and able to identify valuable solutions to the business. Once you have your uh, success team in place, you want to think about your usage metrics. What, what exactly you're going to be monitoring in the system. A great start for you is to look at your business goals. What are you trying to achieve? So in a sales scenario, for example, this could be improving your revenue per customer, improving the, your upsell opportunities or achieve a higher win rate. Then you start taking uh, those uh, services and processes related to these goals and break them, break them down into actions uh, and act activities that the users will have on a day-to-day -day basis. These are the KPIs that you want to track in the system. Now there are, if you look at the, uh, these actions and activities in the system, there are a significant number of actions in the system. It could be in hundreds. So you want to make sure that you're uh, targeting the right set of uh, KPIs to monitor. We usually recommend that you start with a small set of KPIs and then review and update over time. Once you have your initial set of uh, KPIs, you want to engage with the business uh, to make sure that you have a good understanding of the current, current state of the business. You also want to get an agreement from the business or any assumption that you may have. Run an assessment with the business to get a good understanding of where the business is today. What are the gaps and challenges the users uh, have today? And if there are any differences in terms of KPIs from within the different user group that you're targeting. Get a good understanding of how the users uh, of the user journey within the system. Uh, this will help you also identify any potential opportunities for improvement. Make sure you capture all of the details. If you have any other external systems, you want to capture all of the details. This is an ongoing cycle. So this is as you do this uh, initially uh, as part of your setup, you need to basically capture the current state and then with time you'll you revisit that and improve on that. Some of the options that you have to monitor adoption today. For IT administrator, you can use the common data services analytics to review and understand the system usage and other service information. So basically, uh, the common data service analytics provide you a, a high level of yeah, the system usage. So it basically breaks down active users by security role or by device. It also provides you with a good high level of what are the user operations in terms of update, uh, updates, uh, reads and deletes uh, across system entities as well as uh, custom entities. Now, for business, uh, for business KPIs, you want to use uh, Dynamics 365 with charts and dashboard. This allows you to drive KPIs from from business activities. It's best to focus on these actual business KPIs and create reports indicating adoption from business data points. If you're looking for an enhanced or advanced uh, reporting capabilities, you can also export these and use the Power BI reports and dashboards capabilities. One example uh, of using the common data services to capture to capture usage for a specific app 
is to basically create a security role uh, for this app and then assign assign that security role to every user uh, that is going to have access to this app. This is this could be very helpful if you're looking at uh, deploying a pilot app where you you have you have only one app that the users are going to access. So you want to basically get an understanding on how frequent the users are going to use this app versus uh, using their uh, standard web client. Another very important way to capture uh, user feedback is using surveys. When you're looking at uh, uh, asking the user for a, for a feedback, you want to basically uh, get a good understanding of what's your objective from the survey and who you, who the, who's the audience that you're uh, targeting with surveys. So for example, uh, are you going to target everyone, all of the users across your organization with a high overview of uh, of the feedback for the uh, for the system, or you're gonna uh, target a specific subset of users. For example, your sales team regarding a specific uh, sales process that you have impl implemented recently. The second consideration that you want to look at is the survey length and frequent uh, frequency. You don't want to, your surveys to be too short. Uh, so that it's it's not meaningful for you and it's not really providing a good uh, feedback uh, and not reflecting uh, a real image of what the users feel. And you don't want it to be too long that the users uh, will basically not uh, complete the survey. You also want to uh, make sure that it's not too frequent so users start ignoring your survey. In terms of using open versus uh, open versus closed questions, you want to mix your survey between open questions and, and closed questions. What I mean by open questions are basically open questions are more than one word answer uh, questions, which allows responders some freedom to provide a, a feedback for you. This this could potentially be a good opportunity for you to identify potential uh, system improvement or existing challenges. Closed questions are basically a yes, no, or a rating uh, questions which are easier to measure and report. You also want to maybe combine uh, the two to, to get a good idea of one aspect of the system. For example, if you're uh, if you're asking the users for a feedback uh, on system uh, responsiveness and depending on the rating uh, that they choose you might want to include an uh, an open ended question where you want to ask the users okay, if the users are not very happy with the response of, of the system you want the, to have a follow up question where you like which area of the system uh, that you're not feeling it's very responsive, so the user can give you more details on that. As you analyze, uh, as you analyze the the responses you're getting back from uh, your users, you're able to identify trends. These trends basically and those requests and enhancement will feed back into your backlog. It's also very important to acknowledge and provide actions to your users because you want to make sure that the users uh, get the feeling that they are heard and they are part of the process, they're engaged and their feedback matters to your uh, overall evaluation. This is an example of a customer engagement uh, satisfaction survey using Microsoft Forms Pro. My, you can use Microsoft Forms Pro as a tool to distribute and gather survey. It's easy to use. Uh, it has an easy to use survey designer. It allows you to have multiple types of questions as well as uh, branching based on the, uh, the responses. It also offers the real time analytics for the survey responsive, allows you an easy way to spot trends. It also gives you the ability to export the, these responses uh, to Excel. 
this can this can potentially be useful if you want to feedback the, uh, some of this feedback into your uh, uh, project planning and activities. The next section I'm going to discuss the review experiences. As you're uh, reviewing the as you're reviewing your experiences, there are a couple of principles that you you should um, uh, that you should adapt as part of your development life cycle. One is data quality. Missing data in accuracies or data duplication comes with a high cost. Your data helps you understand and manage your customers successfully. So bad data affect your user productivity and waste their time, which lead to increased calls. It also it also could potentially uh, lead to losing your customer due, due to missed opportunities or a bad service. As you're going through your transition, evaluate how your forms are, uh, are designed. Some of the best practices are to use option sets and lookups to ensure consistency and reduce errors. Also, you should schedule regular system checks for data inconsistency incomplete data and verify all data. The second principle is personal value. Focus on what the user needs. Break down your uh, user groups into different personas and start from there. Everyone is using the same uh, set of entities in the, in the system, but it's how it's being represented to each user group. Focus on insights, not data. How you're going to deliver the value uh, for each user using the system. The last uh, principle to look at is uh, ongoing learning and improvement. Treat your project like a product. Continue to test, validate, learn, and reiterate. Adopt an iterative approach to evaluate and improve your user experience. As you evaluate the system, it's important to understand if the system currently supporting uh, your users in a, is an effective and and efficient way or not. Use your usage metrics and user feedback to evaluate how efficient your existing processes are implemented. Identify uh, inefficiencies, inefficiencies such as repetitive screens, unnecessary steps. You also want to look at new features and capabilities we're releasing and how you, these can improve and enhance your overall uh, user experience. Also, you want to align, you want to stay aligned with the business priorities. Often with time, business needs will shift and change. So you want to make sure that you're aligned with the overall program vision and ob objectives. Finally, you want to reiterate the business uh, message. You want to make sure that the users uh, under, uh, understand and very well aware of why are we doing this and also what's in it for me, for each of the user group. For example, for a seller, this may be the ability to deliver a pipeline data without putting together an Excel sheet or, or a PowerPoint. For a bit, for a sales manager, this could be that they're able to have a detailed dashboard where they can drill down into the the different sellers and the related opportunity to get a, to get a good idea of how their team is uh, performing. As you're building your ba your backlog. It's a good practice to look at the work in terms of business value and effort required. If you look at this chart, the top left, the, the top left corner here represent my quick wins or these features that will have most of the impact in terms of value to the business user with minimal effort. You can think of this as enabling a new feature or adding maybe like adding a reference panel to your form. On the other hand, if you look at the, the bottom right corner, these are basically the, the no-go uh, features for you. 
because these include like uh, features where high effort while they don't provide as much value to the to your users. If you look at the uh, top, the top right corner, you see these are your strategic uh, items to work on. So these could be a new process or maybe on a development side could be something like uh, creating a, a grid based custom control where it will require a lot of effort, in, but in the same time, it's going to uh, provide a lot of enhanced user experience to your user. So you want to make sure as you're planning your iteration moving forward is to combine a little bit of mix of both. You, so you want to start with delivering your quick wins on the top left right, but also you want to start some of the work on your strategic items. So for example, if I look at feature 21, I want to, as part of iteration one, I will start looking at uh, analysis and design for this to be later on delivered in a following uh, iteration. Next, I'm going to talk about some of the quick wins uh, you can implement uh, as you transitioning to unified interface that will uh, enhance your user experience. First and foremost is customizing an app working page. As your uh, users start using unified interface, one of the very first screens that they're going to get can be your welcome page. So you want to use the welcome page to provide useful uh, information on some of the updates that you've you've configured that you've developed as part of the, your migration or maybe include links to videos and how to or getting started uh, uh, tutorials. Second, you can uh, use custom help panes. Custom help panes is a new feature in Unified Interface. Customer help panes provides you with a way to configure contextual uh, content to guide users throughout their day-to-day -day activities. Help panes can be used to provide a step-by-step -step guidance and help promote new features. Custom help panes support text, web link, images, as well as embedded videos and uh, inform coach marks. Next, uh, I want to also talk about a, a new feature that we uh, we released: a customizable opportunity close uh, dialog. This is one of the most requested uh, features in our sales app. It allows you the, the opportunity to basically customize the, the close opportunity dialog, adding, adding relevant information to your business. So for example, if uh, as, part of, uh, as part of closing the opportunity, you want to capture uh, what were the key products or what are the key features that made you uh, either win or lose the specific opportunities. You're able to customize this today. You're able to also override the out of the box behavior and implement your own uh, business logic as part of the new form experience. Next. We're also going to be uh, bringing some enhancement to the LinkedIn sales navigator integration. Now you can uh, send and view in-mail messages from within Dynamics 365. This greatly improves your seller productivity as it minimizes the need to jump between sales navigator app and Dynamics 365 app. One of the new features that we have in the customer service is automatic filtering of knowledge base article. This can greatly optimize your agent uh, knowledge base search experience by basically pre-configuring uh, the, no the knowledge base article uh, search using uh, common uh, attributes between uh, your case uh, and your uh, article entity. Interactive dashboard is a new feature that we're, uh, we're introducing with unified interface. With interactive dashboards, you can slice and dice your work streams with just a couple of clicks. 
Interactive dashboards offer you a new date range filter with a pre with a preset date uh, parameter. You can also select a custom time frame. This means that you don't have to include data filter views when you're setting up your uh, your uh, dashboard. Another feature is visual filters, which allows you to include charts in your dashboard, which acts like filters to your work streams. Reference panel is a new feature uh, in the unified interface that allows users to do more with the same space. Users are able uh, to quickly view related records without navigating away from what's important. In the example of a customer service uh, use case, we can see users can see other racing cases in time entitlement or the ability to see and search knowledge base article without le leaving the main case form. You can also add multiple subgrades to your reference panel. I also want to highlight that with unified interface, you're only you only need to design for once and deploy everywhere. If you look at the screen here, you can see that the same form reflows as the real estate on the device changes. So the same for the same form or your desktop will render and reflow on your tablet phone as well as in your Outlook uh, client. Next, I, I want to talk about how you're planning uh, for a future. So as you're planning your transition to unified interface, you should also get familiar with our new update process. I recommend you watch the Business uh, Application Summit uh, in-depth session on how we update our Dynamics 365 Power Apps and Common Data Services. But I want to also discuss uh, a couple of key, a couple of key aspects now. First is our release waves. We want to provide you with the latest features as early as possible, and we want to make sure that we don't break any of your uh, production apps. Your users uh, should not be impacted at all as we're rolling out these uh, new features. So we introduced the release waves concept to make sure that it's predictable and continuous. Our year will be divided into two release waves. Wave one from April to September and wave two from October to March of the following year. We will also publish our release plans for each wave ahead of time. This will give you a clear visibility into what we're shipping into the next six months and what and when it will be available. For example, the 2019 release waves we uh, we published uh, back in June. This is key for you to be able to get ahead of, of time, start planning how you want to leverage these features, get into it, get these features into your development plan, allocate resources ahead of time so you can maximize your user experience and the benefit out of these new features. We also want to provide you uh, early access to user impacting changes. What I mean by user imp impacting ch changes are, these are the mandatory changes that will impact user experience. For example, if I look at the upcoming 2019 wave two, uh, mandatory uh, end user changes, these are the form header density changes, timeline changes, or grid enhancement. While these uh, changes improve user productivity, it can also sometimes be confusing and affect your business conti continuity, as users might uh, have just recently been trained on one uh, user experience, and then they are uh, they'll get another user experience once these rollout rollouts uh, uh, are done. 
So during these two months that we're releasing, uh, we're providing you the early access, you should test all of the impacting user changes. And if there is any changes that need uh, that are necessarily necessary to your customization and solution, you should also be considering this within the early access period. You can also take this opportunity to to roll out uh, these changes to your production environment uh, according to your own organization schedule. All of the features in the early access are production ready. Uh, so uh, you can use that, uh, you can use them in your production. For the rest of the features, it, uh, it will continue to be uh, released uh, as part of the normal uh, wave cycle. Next, I want to talk uh, about some of the key uh, key innovations and uh, key innovations that we have in the market today. We have been making a lot of uh, investment in AI driven apps to enable you to make data driven decisions allowing you to leverage your data and uh, and create insights and decisions uh, and uh, data driven decisions out of them in sales marketing and customer service we're also releasing power power apps ai builder which allows you to basically create your own ai model and and include that in your own custom apps Next, I want to touch out on a specific two areas of investment when it comes to AI and uh, business applications. One is our key investment in uh, sales. So we have the sales, sales insights for managers, which enables managers to learn, to learn about trending topics, competitive trends, and your brand mentions in the market. It allows them to also track important deals, highlight important deals that need attention and guidance to closure. Sales Insights also can analyze your sales calls to identify unique behavioral patterns of your top uh, sellers and bring those best practices to the rest of your teams. It also identify which members of your team need some guidance by uh, reviewing the customer sentiment per seller and the conversation style of the seller. Sales Insights for Sellers, uh, another application, allows sellers to leverage AI in their day-to-day -day activities. For example, they can use a predictive lead scoring to focus on the right deals uh, and the right leads. They can also use uh, who knows who to basically explore who in their company can help them close their deals faster. Or using the relationship inside to make sure that they, uh, they are on top of what matters uh, for them. Another key investment that we're making in customer service is Omnichannel Hub. Omnichannel Hub is a new modern customizable high productivity app that allows agents to, to engage with customers across multiple channels, such as uh, chat and, and SMS. Omnichannel Hub offers contextual uh, customer identification and real-time notification, real-time communication between the different agents or the agent and supervisor. It also provides a set of agent productivity tool like automated uh, knowledge management search or case creation to ensure that the agents are efficient in their work. Only Channel Hub also provides a view to supervisors to get a real-time visibility and insights into the operational efficiencies of agents and utilization across different channels. Omnichannel comes with, route, uh, with a routing and web work distribution engines, allowing you to configure agent presence availability and routing rules across mul the multiple channels you're supporting. It also offers uh, integration to 
Dynamics 365 uh, Virtual Agent, which is another AI driven app that we have. This includes uh, escala escalating the conversation. This also includes the escalating the conversation from the virtual agent to the human agent if needed, providing a full transcript of the conversation for the human agent taking over the case to automatically get the context of the user need or the user question. Customer is a customer service insight. Uh, is another uh, is another app that we recently released. Provide. AI driven capabilities to detect emerging topics, allowing you to proactively deliver better customer uh, service experience. The topic details dashboards give you gives you a detailed overview of key performance indicators for the specific for each specific topic. Using AI technology to show you how. <coughs> sorry, using AI technology to show you uh, what's the impact by product and channel or on, cu on customer satisfaction scores and resolution time of the this specific topic. It also provides an overview of your customer service uh, case resolution performance, showing you topics that you have the greatest. Uh, showing you topics that has the greatest positive and negative impact in your resolution time and your customer satisfaction uh, scores. It also provides you with an overview of your team performance, like uh, which, uh, which agent have the longest resolution time or agents with the most escalations or agent with the lowest customer satisfaction uh, score. This allows you to look at how to improve and coach your uh, team members effectively. So. What's next for you call to action? You should get familiar with the business value and fundamentals of uh, unified interface. Explore and test unified interfaces in your uh, in your organization today, and plan your transition. Here are some resources uh, that are useful for you as you plan and test out your unified interface uh, in your organization. With that, we conclude the fourth and final chapter of the Unified Interface Playbook. I'll open the floor for questions now. Great, thank you very much, Mohammed. I can see that we've answered a couple of questions already on the Q&A window. If anybody has any others, feel free to post them now. And we'll, we'll try and tackle them. If not, then... Um, this uh, recording and uh, the deck will be fully available from our uh, community site. Um, it'll be published along with the other chapters which are already up there. Um, so you'll have a chance to download this and, uh, and go back and review it again. We'll give it a few minutes just to see if there's any more questions that pop in. No, I can see no new questions. So we will close the call early, but thank you very much to everybody that's uh, Let's join the call and, and actually watch all of our, our chapters. We hope you found the content really useful. Um, as mentioned, please head to our community site. We've got a, a load of goodies and, and further content up there that you can help with your transition as you move to the unified interface. Thank you very much and have a good day.